Yo, this Big Gip, and you on Hip Hop Wire. Zaga. First of all, the single was a record that me and CeeLo did. Uh, I was in LA, and uh, we were just playing around one day in the studio. An old record that Bruno Mars had wrote for him. I pulled it up. Bruno Mars was originally on the hook, but then once I wrote the record, I said, yo, CeeLo would be better if you was on the hook. And once he got on the hook, I mean, it sounded like a Dungeon Family song, so it was perfect, man. It sounded great. I got this name Zaga from when my time, for my time when I was out with uh, with Nelly and the St. Lunatics, uh, when me and Ali had the group Kim Folks, and when I was around them, you know, they just reminded me of a young Dungeon Family, Outkast and Goody Mom. So when I would be around them, I would I would say, Yo. Y'all remind me of Cujo and Timo. He remind me of Low. He remind me of 3000. And they would be like, yo, man, you Zaga, because you and I already lived this life. So it's almost like an uh, 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 ode to me, like, yo, it, it means wisdom. So, you know, I'm the beginning and I'm the ending. Well, Outkast's main focus was to come back, let everybody get to see them after 10 years. Great. 3000 right now has the new movie coming out. He's playing Jimi Hendrix. He's doing his thing with that. He's getting ready to setting up, setting up his solo record for next year. Big Boy also is going in the studio setting up his next record. And I'm coming out. And we all on Epic Records, so we, we were LA. So they'll be coming out simultaneously. And yes, I'm sure it might, it, it, in the future, it may be another um, Dungeon Family album. You know, I know CeeLo right now, he's going overseas to, He's gonna be singing at the Belgium Opera for all of November, you know, so all of my guys are moving around and doing their thing, and, and, and surely, next year when we all have time, it's easy. We got records just sitting around, man. I have no real regrets about where the scene of Atlanta's music is right now, simply because every month it's a new star made, every month it's a new producer made, every month it's a new sound made, so, the only thing that I could say that I would I would love to see more of is just balance. But we, we but it's starting to happen because we now we have artists like Lil Rory, and we have other little artists that's coming out and really trying to say something and be artistic. Breeze influences me because first of all, Breeze is the one that brought me the song "Dirty South" that we put on the Goody Mob's first album, Soul Food. So he is the actual author and the person that really named the South "Dirty South," and he inspires me because he's still here, he's still around, and he has parties every week in East Atlanta. <laughs> Look for him. Me coming up in Atlanta, I was a big fan of wrestling. So some of the stuff that that, that I used to see, like. Uh, Rick Flair do. Like he was just always in the three thousand dollar suits and then the Rolex watches and the Rolls Royces and carried five thousand dollars in his pocket all the time. I mean, I looked at the wrestlers when I came up and also I mean I was inspired by people like Prince and and Lenny Kravis and you know just some of the earlier people that really was uh, uh, far out when you saw them. Like the first time I saw Prince on stage with his with his butt cheeks cut out, I was just like, he wild. But I was like, I, I mean, he got the actual point across, you know what I mean? And that was to the industry to kiss his ass, so. <laughs> yeah. So you can use fashion in so many different things and just say so many different things to people. So, I mean, I just use fashion to get people attention because back in the day I felt like, you know, people wasn't accustomed to our um, dialect here in Atlanta, our southern dialect. And one thing that Goody Mob, one thing that we kind of decided early was, okay, if you're not, if you're gonna act like you're on the standards and you hadn't heard the music, I just wear something so damn wild that you'll never forget me. So that was always my objective, you know, when it came to fashion, was to wear something totally wild. I think I'm still the only person that's ever been in Magic City with a total um, a monkey hair outfit on. Um, I just think it's a person that comes from a hip hop background, comes from a rock and roll background, and I just think that, you know, when you're discussing the subject that's that has so many faces on it and so many meanings behind it. I just think that you shouldn't discuss things when you're not as educated in what it could mean all the way around the board. And I just think that it was a mistake that was made by him by even getting on to it, even speaking about it. And uh, right now we're on time out. So we'll be gone for about six months to a year and we'll be back. We'll go make some music, yeah.